Hi there, I'm Paul Kelly. I'm the Research and Apiary Manager at the University of Guelph Honeybee Research Center. We're here at our bee yard. Uh, we research bees, bee health. The bees are really important, uh, not just for the honey that they produce, but the, because they pollinate the food that we eat. And they pollinate the food that lots of uh, wild animals eat as well. Uh, one third of the food that we eat is benefits from bee pollination, and of that, 80% is pollinated by honeybees. So honeybees are vital for our food production systems. Uh, let's come out and look in the bee yard and we'll have uh, a close look at what our bees are doing. So we're just smoking the entrance. That's where the guard bees are stationed. So any bees that are defending the hive are now going to go in and eat some honey. So they're not going to uh, be responding defensively. So in they go. You can see them disappearing there. Now I'll take the lid off the hive. This box is what we call the honey super. So it's for food storage or honey storage. In the middle of the summer, the hive's this high with all these uh, honey boxes. We've harvested the summer honey and this is our fall honey crop. So we'll take the honey super off. To do that, we use a tool called a hive tool and we just reach in there and pry that up. It's really stuck down. And there you can see what it looks like underneath. Lots of bees here on what's called the queen excluder. And you can see the frames there that hold the comb. And that box is about half full. So it weighs about 40 pounds. And we'll puff some smoke there and that'll get those bees going down to eat honey and get them out of the way so we can put our hands where we want. So I'll just pry that off. Again, everything is stuck together. This has a screen, this queen excluder is made up of screen that the worker bees can walk right through. But the queen's bigger and she can't fit through. And that way we could keep her down in the bottom box. And that way, the only thing that goes in the top boxes is honey. And in the bottom box, the queen lays eggs. So we have eggs and larva and pupa. So the th those are the stages and after they're a pupa, the bees emerge as an adult bee. So here we have a whole bunch of bees incubating the brood. They keep this at 34 degrees C and every one of the little brown bumps has a bee pupa underneath it. There's a bee that has pollen on her legs. She just came back from pollinating goldenrod. So that goldenrod will now produce seeds and it can reproduce. The bees collect that pollen for protein. And basically they can convert pollen into bees. The pollen is the protein they need to raise their young. And we'll take another frame out here. See there's lots of bees in there. Almost all of those are worker bees. In the fall of the year, the worker bees kick the drones out. The drones are the male bees. And it looks like they've done a pretty good job of that already. I don't see any drone bees here. The only other queen in the hive is the worker bee, or sorry, the queen bee, and we're gonna have a look for her right now. There she is. So that's the queen bee right there. You can see her abdomen is longer. We paint a dot on her thorax to make it easier to find her and to indicate how old she is. So we use a different color each year. That's how we know how old she is. She can live for up to four years. So I'm just gonna pick her up. So we just pop her into that little cage, drop her in, and then set her on the frames and the worker bees will take care of her. And that way we know where she is while we do the different manipulations of the collie. Lots and lots of pupa here. It feels nice and warm on your hand. When you lay your hand on them, the bees just move out of the way, and then we can see what's underneath. Right down there is a worker bee that's just emerging from the cell, and so today's her birthday. She's just chewing her way out, so that was an egg 21 days ago, and now it's an adult worker bee. So that's what there is to see in the brood chamber. Up in the honey super, we have lots of honey. So 
So there's a frame that's got some goldenrod nectar in it. And they haven't really ripened it, so they haven't put cappings on it. But that's from our fa the fall flower called goldenrod. And if we stick our finger in there, we can taste that honey. And it is delicious. Not the best fall, it's been kind of cool, and so we don't have a lot of goldenrod honey this year. If we manage the hives, they can produce a surplus of honey and have all the food that they need to eat through the winter. And we'll just put those frames back in, and we put them in exactly the same order as they came out because the worker bees structure their colony in a way that works and we don't want to disturb that. Then we can just release the queen, shake her into a, the palm, and then drop her down, and there she goes. So that just close the hive up. Just gonna puff some smoke there, get all the bees out of the way. I'll tap these ones off on the ground. So we don't want to squish any bees. So we'll get them all out of the way. And close the hive back up. Later this week, we'll take that honey off and take it inside and extract it. So, this is the honey that we're going to get out of there. That frame's only partly full, but you see if I stick my finger in there, I can see the honey. Oh, delicious. We're going to have to uncap this area so that when we spin it, the honey will come out. We'll put it into the uncapper. It's a noisy machine, but we set the frame in there and it runs down through between two vibrating knives that cut the, the cappings off. So here we go. Let's have a look. So yet there you can see that the cappings have been re removed. It's sawed away at it. It kind of messes up the comb, but we don't worry about that. The bees will fix it up for us. That frame is ready to be advanced into the extractor. The extractor is a centrifuge that we can spin the honey in. So once we advance those frames in there, we just give it a a spin, turn it on, and the honey flies out, hits the inside of that tank, and runs down into a little sump tank at the floor. From there, the honey is pumped up through this hose and over into a settling tank where we let the wax settle out. Not much to this. We uncap it, we spin it, we settle it. That's the, those the whole th three steps involved in extracting honey. So, this is the last step, filling up the jar. Here at the Honey Bee Research Center, we've determined that Varroa destructor, a parasitic mite, is the number one bee health problem. Janet's looking at a sticky paper, a Melilla file folder that's been coated with Crisco. We put that underneath the colony and mites fall down on it and they stick to that paper and that's a way for us to determine the parasitic load of the beehive. Our goal is to breed resistance to mites by breeding bees that are better at grooming the mites off. We can determine if the mites have been groomed off by looking at them under the microscope to see if they've been damaged. The bees will chew on their legs and we can see that under the microscope if they've been groomed off. We're also testing naturally occurring materials for their miticide effect. So 
So that's our short-term go uh, goal, but long-term we're looking to breed bees for resistance to the mites.